Following the Muslim traditions, I will start my speech today with the recitation from the Holy Scriptures. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Amma ba'd fa a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Al Rahman al Rahim, Maliki yawm al Din. Iya ka nabud wa iya ka nasta'in. Ihdin al Sirat al Mustaqim. Sirat al Lazin an anta alayhim. Ghayr al Maghdub alayhim wa Ladies and gentlemen, I greet you with the universal greeting of Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu or Shalom, meaning may the peace, mercy, and blessings of God be upon you all. Before we explore the topic at hand today, I would like to start with a disclaimer that I stand here today in front of you not representing the 1.8 billion Muslims who belong to over 73 sects. But the Islam I present today is that Islam that has been revived back to its original teachings by Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, the promised reformer of the latter days and the founder of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. We have gathered on this blessed occasion of the 60 years of the coat of arms, a day to celebrate the ongoing prosperity and success of the past of this country while looking forward to many more years ahead. As a Muslim and as a resident of this beautiful land, I pray that the Lord bless this land as He blessed it in the past and make this land a source of peace, success, and prosperity for all those who come to visit and for all those who make Cayman Islands their home. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with unfortunate but it is very unfortunate but true nonetheless that the religion of Islam is one of the most misunderstood religions of the world today. Islam is a religion that has more than 1.8 billion followers in the world and is being falsely represented by less than 1% of its supposed followers. Respected guests, when one desires to study the truth or desires to find any credible information, it is only reasonable to study the direct source which lays the foundation of any religion. For example, if one, uh, when one wants to study the beautiful message of Jesus Christ, one does not go and seek it in the Ku Klux Klan. When one desires to find the truth taught by Krishna in Hinduism, one does not find guidance in the Nexalites of India. This is the same case with Islam. If we desire to find any guidance or truth about Muslims, we must not look at ISIS, the Taliban, Boko Haram, or even the Saudi government. Rather, we must look into the direct sources that gave life and brought light to this religion of Islam. Coming towards the topic at hand today, I wish to share with you the peaceful and true message of Islam as intended by Allah or God Himself. In Islam, there are three sources of authentic guidance. These are used in, de in determining Islamic injunctions and are assessed in the following order. Number one is the primary source, which is the Holy Scripture, the Holy Quran. This is the exact words of God for us. And this is the Holy Scripture the Muslims abide by. The second is the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. The secondary source, meaning the practice of the Prophet of Islam, the man who wholeheartedly practiced what was taught to him directly from God. The third source is the sayings and collections of the teachings passed down by the companions that have been ascribed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now before, before we begin dissecting these sources, it must be noted that the word Islam itself 
means peace in English. Therefore, it is only compulsory that the teachings of this religion should bring such reformation in its doctrine that all acts of service found in this religion should develop this peace in its entirety, whether it be in, in, in the interest of personal, social, or national concern. Looking into the first source, we find that there is no conflict in the regards to the concept of loyalty in Islam. The primary source of guidance for Muslims, we, found, we find our holy book, the Holy Quran, say the following. And God says in chapter 4, verse 59, that verily Allah commands you to make over the trust to those entitled to them, and that when you guide between or when you judge between men, you judge with justice. And surely excellent is that which Allah admonishes you. Allah is all hearing, all seeing. Now the word Allah is the name of God in the Arabic language. If you see the Arabic translations of the Bible, you will find this word Allah which refers to our Creator. Therefore, when Allah is being said, we are all referring to that same God. So in this verse, God does not say that a Muslim should only trust and be loyal to those people that belong to Islam. Rather, it says, trust and loyalty shall be for those who are entitled to it. And when they are given this trust, they should govern with justice. So those people who have been given this responsibility to deliver justice and then guarantee it are indeed considered trustworthy people. This should then ensure you with the comfort that the faith of those put in charge shall be of no significance to you. It is their true fulfillment of justice which holds the highest of regards. This verse is one of many which supports the principle of separation of state and mosque and provides the fundamental basis for upholding loyalty towards those deserving of it. The next verse, God says, O ye who believe, obey Allah and obey His Messenger and those who are in authority among you. This clearly provides the teaching that those who are in authority are all governments responsible over you no matter where you are. I cannot say that I live in the Cayman Islands and take full benefit from the social, economic, and general wel uh, welfare provided by this beautiful country. But my loyalties are somewhere else because I was born somewhere else. I don't live there and I'm not taking any benefits of such and such country, but I remain loyal to it. This is wrong. If we are living here, establishing our homes here, raising our children here, and, ra and sustaining our lives here, then we are obliged to be loyal to the Cayman Islands and those who are placed in various positions of authority. This is a commandment of God, that a Muslim should be loyal to the land where he or she is living. As we have heard the previous speakers talk so profoundly on the subject of love, it is clear that the tree of loyalty is rooted by this principle. Moving towards the next secondary source of guidance for Muslims, known as the Sunnah, or the physical practice and the actions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we find a practical teaching on the subject of love. The Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, is a great guide when it comes to showing love not just for your own, but all those you are in contact with, whether it is your direct circle or the global community. In 628 AD, Muhammad, peace be upon him, wrote a letter to the monks of St. Catherine's Monastery, where, which is known as the Charter of Privileges to the Christians. It is a demonstration of how Muhammad, peace be upon him, respected others that were not Muslim. An extract from this charter reads as follows. It states that this is a message from Muhammad, son of Abdullah, as a covenant to those who adopt Christianity near and far. We are with them. Verily I, the servants, the helpers, and my followers defend them, because Christians are my citizens. And by Allah, I hold out against anything that displeases them. No compulsion is to be on them. Neither are their judges to be removed from their jobs, nor their monks from their monasteries. 
No one is to destroy a house of their religion, to damage it or to carry anything from it to the Muslim houses. Should anyone take any of these, he would spoil God's covenant and dis disobey his prophet. Their churches are to be respected. They are neither to be prevented from repairing them. No one of the Muslims is to disobey this covenant till the end of times. This is an incredible example of how Muhammad, peace be upon him, defended Christian rights and their freedom to adhere to their preferred faith. And this monastery still exists today, and a copy of this letter still rests in the library at the monastery. Respected audience, loyalty has no religious boundaries, nor is it for a selected few. This is something which is considered obligatory upon all Muslims, and this is what Islam requires from us. The third source of guidance for Muslims is found in the compilation of the statements of the Prophet of Islam known as the Hadith. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, has been recorded to say that love of your homeland is part of faith. Now the Arabic word Vatan is used. The word he uses means homeland, where you live, where you reside, and not the place of your birth. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, after having lived, lived in Mecca for 53 years, was forced to migrate to a city of Medina due to extreme persecution and attempts of assassinations. He made Medina his homeland. He always talked about Mecca, but stated that now I have left that city and migrated to Medina, Medina is my home. So he says love of your homeland and your place of residence is a part of your faith. Therefore having feelings or holding a regard for another country is considered admirable. However, one must always remember that for a Muslim, where you live and enjoy your residence is the place that deserves the utmost loyalty. This was the standard and practice which was set by the Prophet of Islam. So the question arises that what is this loyalty to the Cayman Islands? I present to you the words of my spiritual guide today, the head of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, His Holiness Hazrat Mirza Masur Ahmad, the fifth successor to the founder of, the, uh, uh, of our community. He states, a fundamental principle of Islam is that a person's words and deeds should never manifest any form of double standards or hypocrisy. True loyalty requires a relationship built on sincerity and integrity. It requires what a person displays on the surface to be the same as what lies beneath. In terms of nationality, these principles are of utmost importance. Therefore, it is essential for a citizen of any country to establish a relationship of genuine loyalty and faithfulness to his nation. It does, not matter, it does not matter whether he is a born citizen or whether he gains citizenship later in life, either through immigration or by any other means. He states, according to the teachings of Islam, the definition and true meaning of loyalty is the clear fulfillment of one's pledges and covenants at every level and under all circumstances. This is the true standard of faithfulness which is required by Islam. At various places of the Holy Quran, Allah has instructed Muslims that they must fulfill their pledges and covenants because they will be held to account by Him over all undertakings that they have made. The Muslims have been instructed to fulfill all covenants, including those made with God and also all other pledges they have made with the leaders who lead them. Ladies and gentlemen, I can assure you that, that, the Islam, that Islam is very clear about loyalty to one's country. I have presented the texts that are the foundation of what Islam desires to inculcate amongst its followers. Nobody therefore should have this misunderstanding that what was presented here is not supported by the fundamental teachings of Islam. At the end, I hope I have provided some knowledge of Islam which guides me to show this message of great loyalty to my nation 
while living with the creed, love for all, hatred for none. I pray that may God bless this beautiful country. May God enable all of us to live together peacefully. May God protect us from any misfortune. And may the next coming years be better than what He has already blessed this land with. More recently, I have also started a new prayer, which is very new for me at least, something that I never directly prayed for before, and is a matter of great importance to the inhabitants of these islands. And that is, O oh our Lord, protect us from this hurricane season, protect the families, the properties, and everyone who may be affected by such calamity in any way. When and if a hurricane comes, it does not discriminate on the basis of religion, Everyone is affected. Therefore, we beseech refuge in you. It is only you who has the complete power to protect us. Amen. Amen. And thank you all for listening.